just enjoy the time to open your heart and receive from God. If you want to stand, you want to sit, it's up to you. If you want to get on the floor, that's fine too. Um, we'll just have a time of um, entering into his presence and prayer. And then Pastor Shana has a word for us. And then at the end, we'll have some time to, to pray uh, for you and, and that as we close up. So that's kind of the format we're going to see in the audience today. So let me just pray as we go into worship.
when it's even just hard to get a thank you, Jesus, to cross our lips. But we sacrifice to praise unto you tonight. For you have been good to us. And for that we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk for a few minutes. Pastor Sharon, you going to keep me on time? Sure. You know, I can talk a long time. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to talk about a chief woman. I'm going to wait. I'm going to talk about a chief woman. <laughs> I'm going to talk about a chief woman. A chief woman. Who? <laughs> Not who. Money. Who? <laughs> Saturday in Orlando, I talked about a woman named Tabitha. Today, we're, I'm going to talk about a woman named Mary Magdalene. Many of us are familiar with Mary Magdalene, woman of the Bible. And um, she, uh, I stumbled across her um, doing some research for an Easter message that um, I had preached uh, a few weeks ago. And in the text, I said, hmm, I'm going to talk about her at this month's meeting. What I found in the text is a few things I just want to point out. Praise God, I did the large print. I <laughs> got my glasses like I did Saturday. Um, if you guys have your phones or Bibles, if not, just listen. I'm going to read you a text. I'm going to say a few things, and we're going to go from there. Amen? John chapter 20. Verses 14 through 16. I love talking about women of the Bible. So much that I wrote a book about women of the Bible. It's called Acts of Intercession. It's back there. Um, I talked about 37 women of the Bible. And I wrote about this woman years ago. Um, but in this text, uh, God showed me a different spin on this part of the text. John chapter 20, verse 14 through 16. It said, at this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Verse 15, he asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was a gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Amoric, Rebani, which means teacher. Teacher. So this, um, this, if I was to title this message on tonight, I would title it name dropping. Name dropping. You guys heard the term name dropping? You ever, uh, you know, go try to get into a place and you got to drop a name? <laughs> you know, I might send up Pastor Sharon somewhere and say, tell them Pastor Sharon sent you. You know, that's called name dropping. And because they might not mess with her, but if they know she's affiliated with me, oh, I'm going to open the door. Name dropping, name dropping. And, and, and tonight, I want to talk about name dropping. Jesus, he wants us to be able to hear and see him from our original position in him, which is woman. Woman. Notice in the text, when he addressed Mary, he called her woman woman. In Genesis 2, 22 through 23, it says, then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he had taken out of the man and he had brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken, taken out of man. Eve was never given her name until sin entered. Did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. The Bible never referred to her as Eve until sin entered. Her name was woman. Her name was woman. In um, Genesis 2, uh, chapter 2 and 3, the name woman was mentioned 10 times. They never called her Eve. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Before sin entered, uh, the woman was equal to the man. She did not have to submit because sin was not present. Mm -hmm. Think about that. She didn't never have to submit because sin wasn't present. Once sin entered, the position of the woman in the
the earth change, but her assignment and her purpose did not. I want to say that again. Her position changed, but her assignment did not. And, and, and what do we know, uh, what do we think the woman's original purpose was? Anybody, any guess? What was the woman's original purpose? Why did God make a woman? Helpmates, right? Yes, she was to be man's helpmate, what? For him to tend the garden. Let's, let's think about that, women. God gave him the assignment to tend the garden, to name the animals, to take care of the garden. Mm -hmm. He gave him her to help him, right? Mm -hmm. And you know how men are. You know, you know they be given an assignment, but we just kind of got to help them a little bit with the instructions, you know, because they be doing their thing. But, you know, sometimes we have to say, it takes a woman to say, hey, that needs to go. It looks better over here than there. Oh, yeah, you're right, honey, you know. We're, we're there to help them, okay? Be their helpmate to tend the garden. Throughout the Old Testament, even up until the present day, some parts of the world, the woman has been suppressed with no or little rights. Still to this day, most women have been suppressed with no or little rights. In the days of old, a woman's status was equal to a dog. It was equal to a dog, or she was just considered a piece of property. Okay, that's how it was back then. Many women in the New Testament didn't even have didn't even have their names mentioned. They just called them a woman. Even in the Old Testament, you can read throughout the Bible, woman, like a certain woman, a woman, a Shudamite woman, a Canaanite woman. Many women, it was like, so if you see a woman's name in the Bible, she was very privileged to have her name even penned in the Bible. What I love about this story is that Jesus came not only to de destroy the power of sin over our lives through his death, burial, and resurrection, he came to restore the kingdom of God through the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And this included the original intent of the position of the woman in the earth realm. Let me say that again. So when Jesus died, when he came and he walked the earth, when he was buried and resurrected, he came to restore what was lost in Eden. That's what he came to do, to restore us back to the Father. And part of the benefits for the woman is to restore her back into her original position. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so before Jesus encountered Mary at the tomb, he started this process of restoration during his earthly ministry. He often refers to women, the women as woman, daughter, or mother. Go back and look for it in the Gospels. You do not see Jesus calling woman by their earthly name. I think this is about the only instance we see him saying, Mary. You can go back and do it. Don't, don't take my word for it. Go read it for yourself. But in most instances, when remember the woman with the issue of blood? Mm -hmm. He never said nothing about her name. Mm -hmm. Remember the woman that was underneath the table and, and she was um, she came to anoint Jesus' feet. There were women who came to anoint his feet. The Bible said a certain woman. When he, the, the woman at the well. We never knew her name. He never, guess what? And he knew her name. But he said woman. He said woman. So he had already started this process before he went to the cross. Think about that. Think about that. And this was to signify that he was the restorer. Somebody needs to not miss that. Restorer. There are some women that need to be restored. Amen. Amen. There's some women that need to be restored. And part of the restoration is name dropping. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Part of it is name dropping. Look at, um, so let me back it up with another scripture, John 19 and 26. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom 
he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. Notice he did not call her Mary. He did not call her Mary, but he said, woman, this was one of the last words Jesus chose to speak on the cross. What I love about Jesus, he did not forget about the sisters. Amen? He did not forget about us. And so when him calling, his, calling out to his mother Mary as woman, that was part of restoration of the woman back in the earth realm. Amen? 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 Amen. So, so he wasn't just addressing Mary. He was addressing all women of mankind. Woman. Jesus was name dropping in the spiritual sense because every time he addressed his daughters, he wanted us to get used to his original intentions for us, which was woman. That's why he did not call the women by their earthly names. So, so, so now, let's now. I'm, 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 I just was setting up some background. So let's get back into the text. Uh, uh, Mary was so distraught when she got to the tomb that she couldn't even recognize or see Jesus for who he was. When he called her woman, she did not respond. She did not respond. Um, 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 we have to, let's, let's, let's uh, re-examine uh, Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. This was the Mary that Jesus had cast out seven demons. He had cast out seven demons, and once she was delivered, she faithfully committed to his earthly ministry. So the question is, have you been set free by the bondage of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Have you been totally set free? Because sometimes even after we've been, after we have been delivered as women, amen, um, people still remember us by our previous name. They remember us by that name and everything attached to that name that we did in the past. Mm -hmm. In the past. And you know, as women, um, we, we, <laughs> we struggle with this. We struggle with our past. We struggle with our worthiness. We struggle with insecurities because of some of the things that how we have chosen to live our life. Maybe in the past or currently. Because we can believe in Christ, but we... We constantly are ministering to women who are constantly going through some things. Because guess what? Some name dropping still needs to take place in their mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. Even though they've been, uh, uh, have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they're still acting to in their old nature of that previous name. Previous name. We don't know which seven demons came up out of Mary, but I could just imagine what she had dealt with. A lot of women deal with eternal. What, what does it look like for a woman to be in bondage? Because I look like anybody that has demons inside of them, that is a form of bondage. That is a form of bondage. We don't know if this woman had, had been uh, raped, molested, abused, uh, um, some women in their lives, men have pimped them out. Uh, some women, and, and they, they take on that, uh, what has happened to them in their life. Uh, some women have been, the names, now we talk about some names. Some of us women have had things spoken over us. We have been called everything but our name. Can I, am I in the house? Yeah. We have been called some horrible things. So men have totally, not men and women too, so there have been men and women who have disrespected us. Mm -hmm. They may have called us this and that. We're not going to mention the words, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of us, I remember being a teenager, oh, and the girls out here today, oh yeah, I'm that B. Mm -hmm. They take on that. Yeah. They take on that name. I'm that, I'm the one that, I'm this and I'm that. I was on... <laughs> I was on Clubhouse. Y'all heard of this app called Clubhouse? Yeah. I'm still trying to figure it out. It's so brand new. I, I'm still a little confused. But I was just on there just surfing. And what made me so sad, it was a certain celebrity. I'm not going to call her name out, but a lot of young girls look up to her. And in her bio, it says that I am a B, I am a slut, and I am this, this, and this. And I said, wow, that's her bio? <laughs> Now, mind you, that's how she 
role to she's a stripper. She is a stripper, and that's how she has rose to her celebrity by dating all these type of guys and sleeping with all these guys in the industry. And that's how she's at the place where she at. So now she has assumed that name. Even in her bio is, you know, she has a, 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 a celebrity name, okay? But her bio, and it broke my heart. I said, oh my goodness, this is what, this is the resume out here? This is the, the resume? I never forget years ago, I preached this sermon and I took a clip. Um, anybody remember the, the singer Prince? Mm -hmm. I used to love Prince, mm -hmm. right? I used to rock out the Prince. You know, Prince used to fit on a whole lot of artists, right? One of his artists' name was Vanity. Y'all remember Vanity? Yeah. Do you know she, in her that interview, Prince gave her that name. And she took on that persona. He gave her the name Vanity. She was not, she was not named that. But that she, she, she talked about it, how she became who he wanted her to be. And part of that was connected to the name. Mm -hmm. And tonight, Jesus has come to remind us that he's the name dropper. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love before Vanity left this earth, she gave her life to Christ. But she started going through so many things that she used to do in that lifestyle. The drugs, the, the sleeping with men. She said she even worshipped the devil. All because she took on the name somebody else gave her. We as women, we, we also got to remember what we answer to. Mm -hmm. A lot of us is answering to names that God didn't tell us to answer to. We as women, we see that. So, so, so we, we need to only respond to the name that God has given us, and that's woman. Mm -hmm. And anything less than that, we don't need to respond to it. That's why we say chief woman. Who? Who? That's why we say chief woman. Who? He asked Mary, why are you crying? Who is it you be looking for? And, and, and the Bible says she didn't recognize him. Have you ever been filled with so much grief, with so many things that you couldn't even see or hear God? There has been times in my life, even recently, I know God, I know that word, I know all this, but life has a way of getting you down. See, like every time you get up, it beats you down. Then you try to get up again, it beats you down some more. Then you try to get up again, it beats you down seven times. And sometimes you can get in the place. Mary, in this situation, she was distraught. She was grieved. She was vexed because they thought that, first of all, she, and they, ain't that just like, woman? Well, she hung with Jesus to the end. When all the disciples deserted, she watched that man die on the cross. Can you imagine the trauma from watching your superhero, your savior, the person who delivered you from seven demons die, bleed on the cross? She stayed there with his mother and watched and waited until they brought the body down so they could clean it. Ain't that just like a woman? We gonna show up when the men just stay nowhere around. Where y'all at? We gotta, you know, do the cleanup, take care of stuff. So she was in, she, and have you ever, and I, I haven't been to that point, but I have gone through a, a tragedy, tragedies or certain situations or circumstances that are so traumatic, but you just keep on going. Because you got to keep just pushing through. You, this has to be taken care of. Even though it's horrible, I got to go clean this body. I got to prepare the body. I got to go check on it in the tooth. I am emotionally a wreck. But it's just like us women. We're going to keep on going forward no matter what the emotional baggage or wreck that we in. So that's probably why she could not recognize or see God when he was right in her face. Because she was traumatized. How many women are walking around in a traumatic state? Because of the devastation of life. They keep, they're going through the motions and they keep going. It's been times, <laughs> and y'all know, because y'all women just like me, y'all emotional just like me. I go around, somebody say, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm okay. You know, 
know, I put the smile on, I got the makeup on, I got my hair done, I got I got it going. But 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 like somebody I shared, like, you ain't all right. And it's like <laughs> you know. <laughs> you just fall out. It's just like you become a hot mess instantly, like this. But you just, like I said, it's like you're just shell, just I'm going around, I gotta keep going, I gotta keep going, I gotta. But at some time, you're going to break. Yeah. I'm a witness. Mm-hmm. I have broke recently. Mm-hmm. I broke last night. I've been breaking a lot, Shannon. <laughs> have you noticed that? Friday, yesterday. Yeah, he is. But 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 then the, the then the question is, Jesus asked her a question. What question is God asking you today? Do you hear him? Do you see him? Can you recognize his voice? And what is the question that he's asking? Because remember, he said, woman, why are you crying? I just got no crying a minute ago. Nicole ushered in the spirit and I was crying. Why was I crying? Because I just, I felt his presence and I just, I needed that release. So, you know, sometimes, and I could just see God every time we cry. Daughter, why are you crying? What have you been crying about lately, woman of God? What tears has God seen? Did you answer him? And, 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 and then he said, who are you looking for? What in your life are you looking for? What do you need from God tonight? In the same verse, Jesus was name dropping in the spiritual. Mary was the first one to come up to the tomb to check on Jesus. And, and, and this is the part I love. I'm going to try not to get happy. <laughs> Woo! I just want to shout. Just make you want to shout. See, when God name drops, see, he don't do it like this. He don't do it like us. I love the God we serve. The reason he called her woman, because he was changing her position. She didn't even know it. He did not come and say, Mary, why are you crying? Who are you looking Then when he re- and then when she didn't answer, he said, "Well, let me call her by something she's familiar with. Mm-hmm. What things are we familiar with?" Mm-hmm. She was familiar with being called Mary. But what I love about about Jesus is that when he called her Mary, the familiar name, it's like her eyes opened and she saw. But at that moment, he was upgrading her from Mary to an evangelist. Say that one more time. Mm-hmm. When he had spoke woman, he was changing her position in the earth realm. She didn't realize in the midst of her distress, in the midst of her trauma, in the midst of her pain, in the midst of her grieving, in the midst of her suffering, that the God was about to drop her name and uh-huh, bring her up in the spiritual realm. And that's what I'm believing tonight. Who is God trying to bring up? Out of just Tabitha. Out of just Jean. Out of just Nicole. Out of just Sharon. Because why, Pastor Shana, did he upgrade her to an evangelist? Because as soon as she got the word that Jesus was alive, she ran and told the disciples The Savior has risen. One of the first evangelists in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Some scholars might even call her an apostle. Why? Because she was a disciple to the end. She was a follower. Mm -hmm. A disciple just means to follow. A disciple just means the root word of disciple is discipline. She was disciplined in following Jesus. She followed him to the cross. She followed him to the grave. And she fought, and she was there, hallelujah, shortly after he got up. When all the men had ran, this evangelist was there. She didn't know. Mm, thank you, Jesus. This demon, once demon-possessed woman, hallelujah, did not know, hallelujah, that when, at that moment that Jesus was casting out those demons to come out, they had to come out of her, hallelujah, because he saw her as a woman, hallelujah, and he saw her in her future, hallelujah. So he said, you can no longer be bound, hallelujah, by these seven 
seven demons because I'm taking you from the kingdom of darkness hallelujah to the kingdom of God hallelujah and that's a word from a woman for a woman of night I don't care what you have done I don't care what you have been possessed with hallelujah God wants to drop your name tonight mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God wants to upgrade you tonight woman of God hallelujah hallelujah and this is what I love about God is that why does God do these things why does he drop our names why does he upgrade us in the spirit? Hallelujah. He does that because he wants us to understand the power of his name. Hallelujah. Because, because hallelujah, hallelujah, even in the spiritual transformation of Mary's name being dropped, hallelujah, and she becoming the evangelist, hallelujah, and by her going out. But before she went, hallelujah, and told the disciples that the Savior has risen, hallelujah, don't miss this in the text, she addressed him as a teacher, hallelujah, she said, teacher, Ramona, teacher, hallelujah, that's one of the many names of Jesus, so God has to drop our name, hallelujah, so we can clearly see his names, hallelujah, mm, his name is the good shepherd, hallelujah, it's the bright and morning star, hallelujah, hallelujah, it is, hallelujah, the first and the last, the alpha and the mega, hallelujah, God, Adonai, uh, 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 um, he's, uh, he's Adonai, he's El Roy, hallelujah, he is, he has so many names, but his names, hallelujah, is, 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 is the description of his character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus has many names and so does God. And a lot of, this is why God, hallelujah, drops our name. Because he wants us to experience him as a healer. Mm -hmm. He wants us to experience him as a deliverer. He wants us to experience him as the teacher, as the good shepherd, hallelujah, as our rock, hallelujah, as our shield, as the God who will fight our battles, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He wants us to know his name. Yes. Nicole just saying he knows our name, but do we know his? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm in the Do we know his name? Who is, who do you need him to be tonight? What do you need from his name? What do you need tonight? And I, and I, and I said from the Trinity, hallelujah, the God, the Father, the Holy Spirit. Who do you need tonight? I'm closing. Who do we need? Who, who do you need? Pastor Sharon's going to come up, and so is Nicole. <laughs> if you're available, hallelujah. Who do you need tonight? Let me say this, women. We are so critical of each other. We love to judge each other and size each other up. But you better be careful about who you're talking to. Because that very woman hallelujah that's out there like that I said last night that called herself slut, whore, B, stripper it's the same woman Jesus will take out of that and he'll pit her up and he ain't gonna call her nothing but woman what are you struggling with from your past woman of God what, what are you struggling with? I'm so glad that I was delivered. My my maiden name was Shannon Hennings. And I used to, I just gave this testimony Saturday. Many people want to still try to remember that girl from a long time ago. And I used to have a name in the streets that used to call me Queen B. This was before Beyonce got. Because this is before Beyonce got hot. Just before she was discovered, I was a teenager. Why they call me Queen Lee for all the blunts I used to smoke? Mm -hmm. Never knew back then I would be here. But God knew my name. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'm Queen B, and I used to refer to myself. And, and if they called me that one word, I was ready to fight too. I was that one. Come on, let's go. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, what? You call me what? 